Hello everybody and welcome! Thank you for visiting this video. Today we are going to talk about the Azure Dedicated Host. Are you excited to learn something new? But first of all, I would like to thank Gregor and Richard for their amazing initiative with Azure Advent Calendar and for the opportunity to be part of this community. Before we jump in, let me introduce myself. My name is Vukashin Terzic. I work as a solution architect for the company called KPCS and I live in Prague. I have more than 15 years of IT experience and I work with Azure since 2015. If you have any questions regarding today's video, feel free to reach out on any of the provided social media links or leave a comment under this YouTube video. Alright, let's get started! We are going to talk about what Azure Dedicated Host actually is, what are the main features and benefits, when and where we should use it, what configurations are available to us and what is the cost. Finally, I'm going to demonstrate how to configure it. Azure Dedicated Host is a new service that was introduced in August 2019 and during this public preview was only available in a limited number of Azure regions. Luckily, it is now generally available and it is accessible from most of the Azure regions. So first of all, uh, Azure Dedicated Host is not a bare metal solution. We do not have our own server that is hosted somewhere in Azure Data Center. It's a service that allows us to provision a physical server and that server will be dedicated only to us and not shared with other customers. On that physical host we can provision one or more virtual machines and they, are, they can be running Windows or Linux. Provisioned physical server is dedicated only for us and we don't share its resources with other customers. But that doesn't mean that we have to configure infrastructure, server OS and virtualization as we were used to in our on-premises data center. No, Azure is taking care of all of that for us and we only manage what we need. Azure Dedicated Host is fully configurable with existing APIs. We can use Azure Portal, ARM templates, PowerShell and CLI. We can select from different physical server configurations depending on our needs. That can be based on VM family type or number of CPU and cores or available memory. Currently supported VM families are general purpose DSV3, memory optimized ESV3 and compute intensive FSV2 families. To put this in context, this means that the host we chose will only support the VMs from the same family. They can be different sizes from the same family and the number of VMs we can put on our host is only limited by physical resources of the host. You are guessing it correctly, we only pay for the host and not for the VMs on it. More on the pricing later on. So why do we actually need it? Azure already provides wide range of VMs that can run in infrastructure as a service. We can mix and match different VM families and sizes without limitation and we can turn them off when we don't need them to save the cost. So what are the benefits of using the dedicated host in the public cloud anyway? Well, first there are some compliance challenges that we might face. If you are a company with compliance requirements in terms of physical security or data integrity, you are often required to utilize host isolation and to provide hardware ID of the host server. Cloud providers do not share that information about the physical hosts where VMs are running. And as we mentioned, those can change. Yes, we could use isolated VMs to achieve host isolation, but those are very large and very expensive VMs that we don't always need. And then there is also a server-based software licensing issue. Those are tied to the physical server and that doesn't work with VMs. So Azure Dedicated Hosts is here to solve those issues for us. We know exactly what physical hardware we are using and we control what's running on it. On top of that, Azure also offers comprehensive security, privacy and compliance protection that might be difficult and expensive to achieve in our environment. Azure controls when physical servers are updated and restarted. Most of these updates are performed without any impact on our VMs or cloud services. 
but there are those rare instances when updates require a reboot of our VMs to apply the required updates to the underlying infrastructure. And guess what? We don't have control over that. Azure Dedicated Host gives us option to postpone Azure initiated maintenance operations across all of our hosts and schedule them to any time during the given 35 day window. We can't postpone it indefinitely, but we can at least plan it and perform it when we want. We don't have any control of where our VMs are located. VMs can run on any host in Azure region that we selected, and that can be spread across multiple data centers in each zone and multiple zones in that region. And this can change any time. With dedicated host, we can define placement of the VMs and move them in and out of the host or move to different hosts as we need. This is very useful when we run multi-tier applications and we want to have all VMs on the same physical server or when we want host level isolation because we don't know what else is running on the same physical server. And finally, there is a licensing. Ever heard of Azure Hybrid Benefit? That is not a new feature and it essentially means that we can bring our licenses that we already own and use them in Azure to save the cost. But with Azure Dedicated Host, this makes even more sense. We can now bring our server data center license and use it for all of our VMs on that single host. Or we can even use our server standard license to cover two VMs on that single server because we are actually not using hypervisor OS for anything else. And since we are planning to move our licenses, what about the older systems that we own? We all know that Windows Server 2008 support is going to end in January and support for Microsoft SQL Server 2008 already ended in back in July. Well, if you didn't know, Azure and only Azure allows you to continue using those additions and still continue to receive security updates completely free of charge. If you didn't have time to migrate or you don't have a budget for new licenses, here is a way to do it. Move it to Azure. <laughs> And this doesn't apply only to dedicated host. It can be a normal Azure VM as well. Okay, uh, we are repeating a little bit here, but uh, as you can see, uh, Azure dedicated host solves some very unique challenges. For some situations, this is a great solution. For other situations, this is the only solution. But would you use it for normal workloads without those special requirements? Some of my clients would say, well, that depends on the price. <laughs> That's right. So let's take a look what hardware options we have and how much does it cost. As you can see, there are two pricing tiers available. Type 1 host is suitable for general purpose and memory optimized VMs. Type 2 is dedicated for compute intensive workloads. That basically means that type 1 hardware can have more memory and type 2 hardware can have more CPUs. We can select the host type and family during the creation process and that can't be changed. Here are the exact specifications for the type 1. Our host can have more memory if we select memory optimized VM family. We can also see how many VMs we can run on it. Of course, we can mix different sizes and for example instead of 32 D2S VMs, we can run 16 D2S VMs and 8 D4S VMs. Or if we want to lar run larger ones, we can have two D16 SVMs and one D32 VM. That all depends on what we need and it's up to us to decide how we are going to utilize given resources. Type 2 has significantly less memory, but it has more physical CPUs and up to 72 virtual CPUs. You would typically use compute optimized VMs for things like network appliances, batch processing and application servers. Storage options are the same for type 1 and type 2 and they are charged separately. We can choose between standard HDDs or standard and premium SSDs. So how much does it all cost? Here is the simplified pricing table. This is for region West Europe and as you can see it's only offered as pay-as-you-go option. 
This price doesn't include the OS license. In case that you are not using Azure Hybrid Benefit, software is charged separately and it's calculated per number of vCPUs per hour. There are no upfront costs and everything is charged per hour. This means that we can use all benefits of operational expenses charging model and pay only for what we need while we need it without large initial investment. There are also no termination fees and we can cancel it anytime. So how does this price stand against normal Azure VMs? To demonstrate the price differences, I created a sample calculation. By the way, this calculation doesn't include the storage because that costs the same. So in this example, we have maxed out type one host with DSVM family. Price of the host and software is less than $7 per hour. That host can run up to 32 D2 SVMs. So I'm comparing it to the price of those VMs running in Azure and you can see that the price is very similar. We can save some money on Azure VMs with one year or three year reservations and dedicated host still doesn't offer that option. But if we compare pay as you go plans, Azure host is not much more expensive after all. Of course, we pay for the entire host, entire time, and if it is underutilized most of the time, then the price to VM ratio is going to be much worse. And we can't turn it off when we don't need it to save the cost, like we can do with Azure VMs. But if we use the Azure Hybrid benefit and utilize the host with VMs, then we can take full advantage of it for very reasonable price. Let's switch to Azure portal so I can show you how to deploy it and use it. Here is a little dashboard I created for this event. As mentioned earlier, there are many ways on how we can create and deploy Azure host. I prefer PowerShell, but for this demo, we are going to use Azure portal. Before we can create it, we need to create resource group and the host group, but that can be done during the creation of the host from the wizard. Also, if you are a heavy user on Azure compute and you have a lot of VMs in your subscription, you might run into subscription limitation and you will have to ask for extension before you are able to provision more cores. I'm going to choose location West Europe. We are going to create standard DS v3 family type 1 host and since we don't have host group, let's create one. Here we can choose same availability options as for Azure VMs. We can assign availability zone and number of fault domains. This is great, but that also affects VMs we can use on our host. If they are not provisioned in the same zone, then we can't use them on the host and we have to move them first. Automatically replaced host on failure is enabled by default. That's great, because if our host fails, Microsoft will automatically assign us another one and run our workloads on it. I don't know if there is an extra cost for this, but I believe there is not. We are going to use our own license. And don't forget to add tags. If you have any doubts, I recommend you go and watch Azure governance video by Jack Tracy from the first day of Azure Advent Calendar. In case that there are no hosts available in your region, you will get a message here and you will not be able to create it. It happened to me a few times during the preview. I'm sure that after this video, everyone will start creating Azure hosts and Microsoft will run out of hardware again. Okay, that was quick.
Here is our host and we can see its current usage and number of remaining VMs. It's not like we have a bare metal physical server where we configure everything. We can only configure what's running on it. So let's add a VM. I don't have any VMs in this test subscription, so we are going to create a new one. We can create that from here. Creating VM in Azure portal is easy. We can create it as usual, but there are two things that we need to pay attention to. First, we need to put it in the same region and the same zone as our host. And then we have to choose VM size from the family that our host supports. If we don't do that, VM will get created, but we will not be able to run it from the host. I chose Ubuntu server for our demo. Nothing special here. Did you know that we can now use Azure AD to access our VMs and apply RBAC roles to define who can access it? Public preview was announced recently and I love it. Advanced tab is where the magic happens. This is where we can select the host if we already have it. Our VM is created. Let's take a look at the configuration. We can see that it's running on our demo host 1. We can't change that now because VM can be moved in or out of the host only when it's turned off. There is no live migration here. Let's go back to our host. Now we can see that one VM is used. And again, we can't move it because it's running. Let's stop our VM so we can do that.
Fast forward and VM is stopped. Now we can move it out of the host. That's done. And if I go back to the host, I will see that there are no VMs on it. Let's see what we can do with our VM now. Mm, some refresh issue here, let's open that again. Now I can go and add it to the host again. I'm going to do that so I can show you the next part. Interesting part is resizing the VM. If the VM was not on the host, I would be able to choose all available VM families. But because our host only support D2S VM family, I can only choose that. And I can resize it to any size that is supported on the host. Since we are not going to be charged extra for it, let's select the 64 core version. And now if I go to the host, you would expect to see zero available instances since we know that we can run only one 64 vCPU VM on 64 vCPU host. However, that VM is not running and so it's actually not taking the resources. We have to start it first.
and now we can see that it's zero remaining. Our host is fully utilized. Okay, that's it. Thank you very much for watching. If you have any questions, please comment below. Happy holidays.